If you want to sell a product, a service, or a community, this idea might be the difference between you not selling anything, or maybe selling a little bit, and selling so much that you want to pause before you say how much money you make. Selling very well, basically. So, uh, by the way, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jordan Parker. I worked as an engineer for 15 years, built engineering companies, made games, made a lot of things, and now I'm helping creators monetize their businesses and create their own money because algorithms can be trusted and you know, corporations otherwise are getting all of your money instead of you getting all of your money, which is way better. So, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the idea of what is a product and what is an offer. Those are two very, very different concepts and I see those mixed up online all the time. In fact, even I mix them up as I started, because when I started my account on Twitter uh, a long moons ago, many times, many years ago, I s heard something like this. You need an offer and, you know, an offer. So what I was like, OK, I, I need an offer, you know, in enterprise. When you made offers, you were like, we'll give you this shit and you give us this money. Do you have the budget for it? And they, they like open their, their, you know, Excel sheet with their budgets and like, yeah, we have we, the number here matches the number that you're saying us. And then you're like, OK, you're sure you want this thing that you definitely want? And they're like, yeah, of course, we want this thing that we definitely want. And then, you know, you close the deal. It is a very different world of sales, especially when it comes to big enterprise deals, because it's a, it's a game of a lot more numbers and a lot less emotion compared to, you know, selling stuff to individuals, selling stuff to people. And most creators like you, hopefully, will be selling stuff to people. And that's kind of normal because, you know, they're working with corporations can be very, very tiring. There is a lot of politics. There are a lot of, you know, red tape that you have to go through to actually do anything. But whenever you start selling, if you spend five seconds reading online, you'll hear you need an offer. And, you know, there's books on the topic. There's a lot of stuff. I won't be defining a lot of this here. I'll just give, be giving you a very simple framework to think about this. But when people think about an offer, they're like, OK, you know, I write stuff. I write stuff. That's an offer, right? You know, I write stuff. You want you want I write through stuff with you? Yes. And then, you know, you go to people, you write this online and it doesn't work because I write stuff isn't necessarily a very good offer because, you know, it's not really offering much. Uh, it's not even a question. It isn't like it's just a statement of your ability to write stuff or you, I edit stuff or I do whatever. Uh, and it's just not going to be very effective. Obviously, we can make this better. I'm emphasizing the, you know, the, the weakness of this offer by using a ridiculous example. But uh, the problem with this is this isn't really an offer. This is more of a skill. So your skill is gonna is not going to be I write stuff. Of course, it's just going to be writing. So writing is a skill that you have, which is cool. But writing is still not something like, first of all, uh, this is a skill, not an offer. And let's make this, you know, yellow because yellow is cool. OK, so we have the skill of writing and we need to make an offer of, you know, writing stuff for other people. So let's first, you know, make this remotely close to an offer and uh, add, you know, some sort of qualifier. So let's say for you. So if I write stuff for you now, that that is a little bit better. It's less worse. So if we say uh, uh, I will write stuff for for you, that is a moderately bad offer. Like it's 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 pretty bad. So it's, it's horrible. But we we are still better off because we have a difference now. We we can make the distinction between a skill, something that you can do. You have the ability to write stuff. So let's say you're writing LinkedIn posts, you're writing emails, you're writing sales pages. This is all writing in some form or capacity, and you can be doing this writing skill for other people. By the way, excuse the uh, super annoying pop-up that, that gets here. I can't turn it off. It's the new beta of Mac OS. It's amazingly secure, and uh, it's very careful about telling me what's happening with my screen recording about 15 times per second. Anyway, so... Uh, we have your skill of writing, but we, if we want to package this better into an offer, we want to think about not, we, we don't want to think about, and you see me stuttering, that's because I don't edit those videos, because I want you to see a real person thinking. Anyway, so if, you, if we look at the skill of writing, this is not what people care about. When I go to somebody who is a writer, I don't buy writing. 
When I go to somebody who is a gym trainer, I don't buy gym training. I don't care about gym training. I kind of hate gym training. I kind of hate the whole, the whole process. But what I want is the results of gym training. I want the, the results of writing. I want the results of video editing. Because I don't care about what you do. I care about what I get. I'm selfish in this manner because I'm giving money. And I'm giving money so I can be selfish. Right? So if I pay you money for something, I, I'm buying the results, not the offer, not the skill. And not anything else. Like, I just need to get the results. Now, the offer will promise me some sort of results, of course. But how do we package that? Because writing doesn't mean anything. So if we take, you know, uh, making a website, you, we would have, you know, we would have writing, we would have design, we would have... This is not how I spell design. Design. All right, all right, my spelling is amazing today. Anyway, we have, we have design, we have programming, we have, you know... I don't know, uh, CRO, click rate optimization. We can have, I don't know, uh, setting up Google Analytics and we can have a thousand other skills. Now imagine an offer that says, I'll write design program CRO, set up Google Analytics and then another 17,000 different I little things that I'm going to do to set up your website. Yes, that's very descriptive, and that tells me tells you exactly what you're going to get, which, if you're kind of in the know, might be remotely helpful. But at the same time, it's very confusing, and it still doesn't talk about what I really care about, which is what am I getting? What is the you know product of your skills? What is the the final thing that I get? So we need a middle point between the, those two, which is going to be exceptionally important, and is going to make this whole picture make a lot more sense. So this is here is going to be a product. So you work. You do some work, of course, and then your work generates a product. It creates something. You have a product of your work. Now, the product is, you know, you buy a bicycle, even though a bicycle is still a product, but a product of your skill. It can be anything. So you sit down, you write a website for four hours, and the product is a website. And this is a much more tangible idea compared to just, you know, I write stuff for you or writing design and other abstract skills. So uh, a website a landing page, a fitness program, nutrition plan. Fitness, fitness examples are the easiest. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, let, let's see what else. Uh, I don't know. Clarity. <laughs> no, clarity is, 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 is stupid. I don't know. Um, financial analysis. Analysis of spending, of business spending, which is a fanciest product. Anyway, <laughs> you can see that we have we have those two different categories. This is something that I need. This is a, a deliverable thing that I can get. I can imagine a website. I can imagine a, a landing page. I can imagine a fitness program. I kind of want those things in some form. I truly want the result from them. I truly want the, the results they'll generate. I want the visitors that I'll get from the website to become clients. I want the people on my landing page to sign up for my email list. I want the fitness program to make me super shredded i want the nutritional plan to let me lose 15,000 kilograms and i want this financial analysis to let me save 10,000 bucks a month in my business you know i want the results of those things but i kind of want those things i kind of get them they're meaningful to me your skills aren't so we have skills as the first step then we have products as the second step and finally we have the offer the offer is the part that i see people mostly misunderstand and they usually break it down into some sort of a conglomeration between all three of those things or something silly like that. Or they basically bunch them all together and try to explain them with one word. That's exceptionally difficult to understand and that can, that can be very confusing. So we have our skills, we turn the skills into a product and what do we need for this product now? We want people to see it and understand that product. We want to explain it to others and invite them to purchase it. So the offer isn't anything super special, it's not magical, it is simply an invitation for other people to see this product and eventually purchase it. So this is an invitation. Very simple, very straightforward, but very, very important to understand as a distinction. Because if you have a product that can be a website, you can make people websites or an edit, uh, edit videos for whatever. So you can have this as your product. That doesn't mean this is the only invitation you make. 
you can make an invitation because, again, remember, people want stuff that they care about, not the stuff that you make. This is a deliverable. It is easy to imagine. It's understandable, but it's still not really what I want. I want the results from this thing. So we can invite people and speak about the results that they're getting to increase the chance of them ac accepting our invitation and actually purchasing our service or product or whatever we're selling. So what do you do? You can create multiple invitations, multiple offers for the same product. Let me show you an image of that because visuals make this easier. All right, so we have an offer, we have a different offer, we have a third offer, we have a fourth offer. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do five because four is just way too symmetric and it's kind of annoying. All right, see? Okay, so we have uh, the product is uh, long form, uh, five long form videos edited per month. So I'm selling here in this example, a subscription service, you pay me an X amount of money and I edit five long form videos for you every single month. It's very straightforward stuff. So we can have different offers for that very same thing. This is, by the way, this is a product. This is something that the deliverable thing that people can touch. This is something that people can understand and imagine. The skill is video editing. The skill is storytelling. This, there's a bunch of skills behind this. We don't mention the skills. We, you can mention them, you know, explain who you are, but people generally don't care. So you don't need to go, oh, I, uh, I will use storytelling, you know, like, sure, yeah, you can use them to kind of position your, your message a little bit. But in general, people care about what they're getting. So focus on, on explaining that very clearly and then mention your skills in passing by, you know, in the section in which you explain what, what, who are you and why should they trust you. So it's, uh, it is cool to trust an expert in storytelling and video editing, for example, I don't, but I still don't want storytelling and video editing. So you have to kind of separate those two. I want an expert to work with me. That's why mentioning your skills can be useful. That's where it can be useful. But in general, I don't want to buy your story, storytelling and video editing. I want to buy the results from it. So let's think about the offers. So this can be uh, get people watching your videos longer. That's a very useful offer. So on YouTube, you need a certain amount of hours of watch time to get monetized. If people want to get monetized, they want people to watch their videos longer. So this, this offer makes sense. I want people to watch my videos longer. So this might make sense. And this also aligns with consistency because I need to be posting a lot of videos for me to build a good YouTube channel. So having five per month makes a lot of sense. So this is, a, uh, this is one way to offer this. It's the same product, but, uh, but the offer talks about something like this it doesn't even mention the video editing, you, you will off, obviously, like if you have a sales page, you will mention that you edit videos, of course. But the actual offer is focused on the problem, not the, the actual deliverable. Because people care about their problems, they care about themselves. So, next, let's see. Uh, get more buyers from your YouTube channel. This makes a lot of sense as well. I'm a business owner, I want to make videos, I want to get clients. For example, here I want to get people to sign up to, to my newsletter. So you should sign up to my newsletter, it's called Creator Income. It helps you make money as a creator, make your own money as a creator and be able to say, fuck the algorithm at any point of time and not worry about get, getting all of your money from the charity that is you know, YouTube X or whatever you know, platform that shares ad revenue with you, but selling your own stuff and actually making your own money, which you need to do if you want to grow a real business and if you want to make a lot of money Money in the future and not worry and you know pull your hair because something might happen and you might get shadow banned or something crazy like that anyway so we have a uh, link below is what I mean by anyway <laughs> so we have uh, we have two, two completely different offers here uh, we have more uh, pe people watching your videos longer we have more buyers but let's say this person does you know is kind of a crazy person and doesn't even care about you know selling their own stuff they just want to get more views so we can say, get more views to your YouTube videos. This is a third offer. It's completely different from all the, the previous ones, but it still talks about the same product. They, it all, it all, offer, all of the offers are going to invite people to this very same product. And they are all going to be valid offers and they are going, all going to be true, but they are towards the same product. And if you're not sure... If you know that this is the product that you want to sell, and very often if you have a skill, you, you won't have a thousand different products you can sell. Like if you are into do-it-yourself Dungeons and Dragons gaming tables, you're probably going to sell Dungeons and Dragons gaming tables as your product. 
So you, you, you shouldn't be super creative with changing the product a thousand times. You should just write offers for the product until one of them works. So uh, you do this by just sitting down, figuring out what kind of problems people have, and then you know, offering, the, offering those problems as solved using your product. Let, let's see what, what else we have. So we have, what, what could people want? We can, we can uh, want more watch hours. We can want more people to view the videos. We can get more buyers. Enterprise companies do this thing called brand awareness. Basically, you want more people to know about you. That helps them reduce their ad costs in the long run. But let's do, uh, get more people talking about your brand. That's a different offer. It's a complete, this, this is going to attract completely different people compared to this. This is going to attract beginners. Beginners think about views. Experts think about watch time and, and buyers. Big enterprises think about people talking about the brand. If you're making 500 bucks a month, you don't care about how many people talk about your brand. You just want to make money. If you, but if, you, if you're already you know, making 15 million a month, you don't care about making another 100K from YouTube. You care about people talking about your brand and uh, maybe reduce your uh, know, C CP, not, not CPM, let, let's see, CPC, click per, uh, cost per click uh, by 30% using YouTube. This is a, a, a completely different offer uh, uh, ever still. Like this is about awareness. This is a more, more about getting more eyeballs on the brand. And it, yes, it will have an indirect uh, effect on CPC, but it's going to affect a lot of other things. So it's going to make sales easier. It's going to make support easier. It's going to make a lot of things easier. Apple has an easier time providing support for the users compared to companies who have no brand. Because if you have zero trust from the, from the user, they don't trust your support and your support has an uphill battle to even help people. Apple has a much easier chance of doing this because they don't have to fight that uphill battle. Yes, it's still hard because, you know, dealing with angry people is not, not, not ever, you know, fun. But it's still much easier if you have a brand. And this is very specific. This isn't about any of those other things. This is specifically if you run ads, your ads is, are going to be cheaper. It means it means your customer acquisition costs are going to be customer acquisition costs. Sorry, will be lower. And if your customer acquisition costs are lower, then your revenue, uh, not revenue, profit will be higher. Sorry, mixing up uh, terms. I'm used to to writing those, not so much used to speaking those. Anyway. So you get the idea. We have five different offers, completely different offers, appealing to completely different people, pointing to the same product. And behind the sa this same product are the same set of skills. And people will not care about the skills. They will kind of care about the product, but not as much. And then they will finally care about what they're getting. This is what people are getting. This is what you offer. This is what you put in your invite. You invite people. Hey, do you want, more pe uh, do you want people to watch your YouTube videos longer? If yes, I can edit five long form videos for, for, for you every single month. So you have to, you, I will even publish them on, on YouTube so you don't have to worry about anything. You just send me the, your recordings and I'll just get everything done for you and you just enjoy the benefits of longer watch hours. That's not a bad offer. That's a, that's a reasonable offer. It, it removes a lot of the uh, investment of time from the other person. It removes a lot of the complexity. It doesn't bother the other person with all of the skills on the, be on, on the back end. Do you do design? Do you do thumbnails? Do you do all of that stuff? It's like you get the results. You're focused on the results and, you're, and you can exp explain all of those because you're supposed to be an expert selling this or at least better than the person you're selling this to. But at the same time, it's mostly focused on here's what you get. I will do everything or I'll do the part that, you know, you're paying me for and you get the results. And when people see that, they're more likely to buy. Now, there's a lot more to say about offers, but we'll do a video on that, you know, some other time. For now, understand the difference between your skills, products and offers. It's essential. If you do the things this way, if you make offers this way, you are going to make a lot more money because you will find an offer that works and one of those offers will work 15 times better for your audience and you, this offer is going to get you 15 times more returns on the effort you put towards it, which means 15 times more ROI, which means a lot of good things for you and your business. So focus on making good offers and to make good offers, you need to understand this distinction. I hope that's clear and I hope you learned something. Have a lovely day and ninjas.